Okay, everybody. Assalamu alaikum. And today we are going to talk about the anticholinergic pharmacology. And when we talk about anticholinergic pharmacology, so uh, these are also called parasympatholytics. Okay, why parasympatholytics? Because we know that cholinergic pharmacology was all about parasympathetic innervation. And when we say anticholinergic, so def definitely it takes us to the idea that right now we are going to talk about something that is shutting off our system, which happens normally, right? So in um, anticholinergic pharmacology, we are going to focus on anti-muscarinic uh, any anti-muscarinic receptors because previously we have discussed how exactly are the effects and functions of muscarinic receptors. So right now I'm going to focus on the anti-muscarinic receptors, anti-muscarinic drugs. So what are they blocking? As the name indicates, anti-muscarinic, like anti means against. So they're going to work against the muscarinic receptors. That means they are blocking acetylcholine release. Right, everybody? Acetylcholine would be blocked. And secondly, what they would do is they would uh, diminish the cholinergic sympathetic neurons that innervate salivary and sweat glands. How exactly they are going to function? Let's talk about it. Before uh, we jump into the depths of the antimuscarinic pharmacology. I think it's very important for us that we reinforce muscarinic receptors. What are they, how they work and everything. So when we talk about cholinergic receptors, we uh, try to remember that there are two receptors which are innervating the cholinergic ends. So this is nicotinic receptors and muscarinic receptors. Uh, nicotinic receptors are of two types, NM and NN. NM is going to uh, donate for neuromuscular junctions, and NN would be present on autonomic ganglia in the central nervous system and adrenal medulla. When we talked about muscarinic receptors, we learned that there are five types of muscarinic receptors out of which the four, three, M1, M2, M3 are uh, more predominantly present in our body. Secondly, we talked about that M1, M3, M5 have the excitatory effect and M2 and M4 have inhibitory effect. Uh, then I want you all to please look at this slide, which I think I am making you all view in my every second lesson. So over here right now, I want you to spot where exactly you can see muscarinic receptor. Can you please spot here in this slide? Yeah, that is present only in parasympathetic division, right? It is not present in somatic. It is not present in sympathetic. Only it is going to innervate the uh, the postganglionic uh, on the postganglionic end of the um, uh, of the receptor. Okay, so over there in parasympathetic, you would find muscarinic receptors over there, where it would be receiving messages from the acetylcholine and making things work. As we have already discussed, that M three has excitatory effects. Okay, so over here. We are just going to revise everything like really quickly. These are the functions of the muscarinic receptors. Wait, I have a problem to deal with. Okay, I have we started recording. All right, sweet. Okay, so we were talking about the effects of the muscarinic receptors so that we can talk about the anti-muscarinic receptors, all right? So if you see over here, I, and when we talk about the sphincter, so 
we over here are talking about the circular muscles right which are in the eye in the iris and that contracts and it causes meiosis what was meiosis it was the constriction of the pupil right now tell me if i am giving somebody antimuscarinic drug so what would happen to the eye what would happen to happen to the pupil if in the muscarinic drugs okay the muscarinic drug were decreasing the size of the pupil then definitely antimuscarinic would increase the pupil size right okay then we talk about ciliary muscle here it's contracting all right accommodation for near vision and in antimuscarinic it would relax and the people would trouble would have trouble seeing the near objects okay sa and av node so you see over here is like negative chronotropy negative dromotropy negative inotropy and everything is like negative right but if i'll give antimuscarinic so it would be positive like everything would shoot heart rate would shoot conduct velocity would shoot up right okay talking about bronchioles in the lungs over here they are saying contraction so obviously antimuscarinic would like relax them right make them huge make them relax okay how about the glands how about the mucus in muscarinic it was excessive secretion right but when we talk about antimuscarinic so obviously maybe we would have very much dry throat because of less mucus secretion right it can be of benefit if it for example if somebody's like body is hyperactive and they're producing a lot of acetylcholine so for them this antimuscarinic drug would definitely be a blessing but if like you don't have anything and then you're taking it so oh you're going to face a lot of adverse effects all right then talk about git all right in git over here they are saying increase motility increase secretion contraction which would which would lead to diarrhea and involuntary defecation now the person who would have antimuscarinic effects that person would obviously have all of these like delayed delayed uh, uh, like reduced secretion of the stomach right uh, of the glands as well and then um, the gastric mobility won't be there the motility won't be there and then along with that uh, in this time over here it's contracting right so obviously in antimuscarinic it would relax and over here you see they're saying involuntary defecation involuntary defecation means you just can't control it and you would defecate like no matter what right however if you're taking antimuscarinic drug it means that you would have real big trouble in um, passing on stool you would have severe kind of constipation then talking about bladder over here they're telling that the muscle uh the bladder muscle okay it would um, contract and the trigon or sphincter would relax and it would lead to urinary incontinence however if you're taking antimuscarinic drug so definitely you just can't like pass on the pee that much um, like without any control right it it would be very much in control the urination and everything then talking about the sphincters over here they're saying relaxation except lower esophageal which contracts right so in um antimuscarinic drug the effect would be like opposite right um the sphincters would contract except lower esophageal which would relax and when it relaxes you do have acid reflux and all all right all right then we have glands glands increased secretion of sweat salivation lacrimation right so if somebody is having except remember those hands which i showed to you in my last lecture where the hands were all sweaty and um, everything so over here when i am taking antimuscarinic drugs so definitely it would be a lot of less sweat a lot of less salivation and lacrimation then comes up to blood vessels and cilium 
over here, the blood vessels are getting dilated. So definitely an antagonist effect, it will be a bit different. So let's talk about it. Okay, over here, I'm going to, um, I have written a huge, you can say the macro, uh, macro division of the entire drugs, the anti-muscarinic drugs. So obviously they're not that less, they're more. Uh, okay, then it is anti-muscarinic have two major subtypes, right? One is tertiary amine alkaloids, and the other one is quaternary amine, right? So when I talk about tertiary amine alkaloids, alkaloids, I'm sure you have studied in uh, pharmacognosy, all right? They're poisonous, they're natural, they're in plants, right? So these are, this is the division of the drugs, which is uh, the tertiary amine alkaloids, they're natural, right? So it has atropine, scopolamine, and uh, wait a minute, the screen. Okay, then uh, wait a minute, something is wrong with the screen. Okay, then we have tropic amide. Then talking about quaternary amide, so they are propanthaline and then ipratropium. Uh, talking about the uh, division of these uh, drugs, just a mnemonic to make you remember this like very easily. So anti-muscarinics have the, I just made this, okay? You, I'm sure you can come up with better mnemonics. Uh, so the thing that I made is tertiary amine set because it poses. Now, uh, you can make on your own, all right? Set was for scopolamine, atropine, and uh, tropicamide, and quaternary IP. IP is for uh, ipratropium and propanthaline, uh, right? Okay. Then, uh, as I've just told you, that natural alkaloids are there. Natural alkaloids, and it, uh, I've already shown to you in my previous slide. Wait a minute, let me go back here. This is copolamine, okay, has other name also, which is called hyoscine, right? So these are lipid soluble, good oral absorption, good distribution. They can cross the CNS barrier, right? Blood brain barrier. Now talking about that, how come atropine is different from the hyoscine? So hyoscine has basically shorter duration of action. It has less CVS effect more CNS and depression act, depressant action, more anti-emetic action, used in motion sickness, can produce amnesia. Amnesia is forgetfulness, right? Okay. Then is synthetic atropine sub, uh, substitutes. So these are all of the name which we are going to study now, all right? Okay. So the mechanism is like very simple, right? But what we should know is this, that atropine and hyoscine, which are the natural alkaloids, they're not selective, okay? They're going to like produce impact on every area of the body. However, others, especially the synthetic ones, they, are, they have the selective effects on the body. Talking about mechanism of action, so tertiary amines have major impact on the central nervous system. Quaternary amines, they have some effect on the central nervous system and they produce more effect on the peripheral nervous system, right? If we go back, so these were quaternary amines and these are the tertiary amines, right everybody? All right, so pharmacological effects. These are the two mnemonics which I found like everywhere. And I thought that I should share them with you. So this is, you can say a kind of a summary of um, anti-muscarinic effects. So over here, you can see the baby and the baby is saying that the baby can't pee, can't see, can't spit, can't pass on the tool. So the thing is this, the person just can't do it because there is lack of water, there is dryness, right? All right. And the other, which I really found really interesting, okay, that is mad as hater, 
why they say mad as hater because they would be altered mental status right uh, how exactly this would happen i'm going to talk to you about then it's blind as a bat i told you in the beginning that when there would be the pupil size would increase so definitely the person would have a lot of difficulty to see so that is why they have written this uh, blind as a bat and the dilation of pupil is called midriasis then is red as a beet why red is a beet because um, the blood vessels which are present on the skin in the face they actually dilate and because of that you uh, you experience flushing on the face flushing is like redness on the face right hot as hair so you see dry skin and hydrosis dry skin is called anhydrosis all right and then dry as bone so you see the mucous membranes would dry up and then of course uh, all of these symptoms which the baby is suffering from would happen right all right so pharmacological effect first of all the eye like i said dilation of pupil increase in size of the pupil so here you see the uh, pupil is so much dilated right okay so how the, this dilation is happening because the iris muscle i have already told you is made up of two kinds of muscles right what is circulatory muscles and the other one is the radial muscles now what would happen is this that this radial muscle all right would contract however the circular muscles would relax due to blockage of muscarinic receptors right everybody okay uh this i just attached this table as a summarization of everything that agonis was contracting the uh, circular muscles in the eye and it was producing meiosis which is the tiny size of the pupil however in um, antagonist drug okay which is anti muscarinic what happened to the circular muscle it relaxed and that's why vidriasis happens then we talked about um, in agonist so the ciliary circular muscles okay they contracted and that's why um accommodation was there and when we talk about antagonist so at that moment the relaxation of circulatory muscles was there and that's why you suffer from cycloplegia now what is that let's talk about it uh now you see over here the plegia is actually used for paralysis right so Cryoplegia is paralysis of the ciliary muscle of the eye, resulting in loss of accommodation. Now, what is accommodation? I have already told you in my previous lectures that accommodation is about how well you can see the things that are far away or they are near. And how exactly you do that? Because this ciliary muscle which you are observing right now, okay, it gets like contracted and relaxed due to which the lens size is getting affected and that's how we see properly right when we talk about the uh, lens and when we talk about the function of ciliary muscles so it does not deal with how much light is entering or entering into the eye it deals more with how well the focus is being produced right just like this that you have a dslr and then it has a lens attached to it and then you try to fix it so that uh, there would be a good uh, uh, you know fine tuning of the image so it is that okay the lens makes the object clearer look clearer now uh, over here when i am giving anti muscarinic drugs so what's happening is this cycloplegia is there which is paralysis of ciliary muscle now this is paralyzed all right so what would happen so obviously the lens won't get thinner or thicker in size right so that's why the accommodation would be lost and because of the paralysis of the ciliary muscles the curvature of the lens can no longer be adjusted to focus on nearby objects it is due to contraction of the ciliary muscles all right everybody so 
in short the accommodation would be lost then we talk about the effect on the heart if you can see over here the normal heart beat is this all right and as soon as a person takes an anti muscarinic drug so positive chronotropic inotropic and tromotropic effects are there i've already talked about what are they in my previous lecture so i'm not going to talk in more detail about it okay then is facial blush or face blush uh, the name indicates that the face blushes all right so why this is blushing this is because of the dilation of the blood vessels in the facial area okay and this is majorly because of the atropine flush right all right um okay then is the rostomy wait a minute all right the rostomia if you see over here um the saliva is produced by three these three glands right parotid submandibular sublingual all right these three are there which produces saliva now what happens is this the anti muscarinic drug actually inhibit these and that's why xerostomia is there which is the dryness of the mouth which is due to reduce uh, uh, secretion of the saliva all right the absence of saliva is there the fissures actually start to happen on the tongue all right okay then is pharmacological effect on git if you can see over here reduced gastric secretion like we just talked in our when we were discussing the table and apart from that the peristalsis would be reduced it means the uh, pushing food food forward would be like slowed down and because of that prolonged gastric emptying would be there and since peristalsis also happens in the intestine so that's why prolonged intestinal transit would be there right so in short everything would be prolonged right okay uh like i just said uh, when we were discussing the table when we talk about respiratory system we know that our entire respiratory system is covered up with epithelial layer which actually has mu goblet cells which secrete mucus right now what happens is this um if we have muscarinic activity so in that what would happen the um bronchioles okay they would um uh, they would get taken up and of course the excess mucus would be secreted however when we talk about the anti muscarinic activities so in that the bronchodilation is there and also reduce reduce mucus production is there right you see everything is so dry here right or everything is so like um mucus mucus flooded and then the walls are so thick enough the inflammation is there right okay then is i have just talked to you earlier that when somebody takes muscarinic drugs right so what happens is this uh, they pass on urine without intention right however if you take anti muscarinic drug so what would happen actually is this if you look over here i have just written contract here contract here and over here this is relax this is relax okay so this means that the ureters would relax all right the uh, muscle of the bladder which is called detrusor muscle it would relax however the sphincters would contract due to which the person would have trouble passing on the urine okay all right then as tertiary amine pharmacological effects the person would become so much restless all right and the person would be excited a lot of excitement would be there apart from there hallucination would be there hallucination is a feeling that somebody is there and sometimes it gets so real so real that you actually start believing that somebody is actually there and you do hear uh, their voice you do talk to them you do see them and everything okay so this is hallucination 
Second effect is delirium. Now, this is something serious. Delirium is very much like dementia. Now, what happens in dementia is you forget everything, but it happens slowly and gradually. Okay. Um, and then all of a sudden you do remember, and then all of a sudden you tend to forget again. But um, when you have delirium, okay, delirium is like quick production of forgetfulness, and then you even answer wrong. Okay. Like this guy is saying, hey, did you watch the movie? The other person saying, do I live on the street? Like the completely like lame answer, which is not related at all. The person is giving that, right? So delirium is there. Uh, anhydrosis, dry skin effect, which we just discussed due to inhibition of sympathetic cholinergic innervation of the sweat glands, which I've just talked in the start of the video. Uh, this is, uh, I just attached this uh, slide if any one of you wants to uh, go through the detail of these three uh, like uh, effects so you can uh, pause the video and then read them. Okay, so treatment of toxicity is you empty the stomach actually if you have ingested it and then you take anticonvulsant or basically there is more simple uh, uh, there, there is more treatment of the symptoms rather than giving some medicine okay so you actually deal with the symptoms more you don't give the medicines more when you have a toxicity of antimuscarinic drug however the antidote is physosigmine which we discussed previously